Hi there, we're here with uh, Miss Thomas today, who has agreed to talk to us about uh, acute uveitis. So thank you very much. And My pleasure. Thank you. And I just want to start by saying, first of all, what is it? And what's the difference between anterior and posterior uveitis? Well, anterior uveitis affects mainly the front of the eye, as the name suggests. Mm -hmm. And posterior uveitis is when you have inflammation in the middle segment of the eye. Uh, so in the vitreous, which as you know, is the gel that's in the behind the lens and affecting the retina, the choroid or the optic nerve. So anything that goes beyond the lens effectively is posterior uveitis. Okay. And anything that's in front of it in the anterior chamber is anterior uveitis. Okay, okay. So uh, a patient comes to you with, um, with acute uveitis. How do they present? What do you see? It depends on whether the anterior segment or the posterior segment is predominantly affected. Either way, they may develop blurring of vision, redness of the eye, pain, which is a very different kind of pain to conjunctivitis hmm. because it's more like a sort of dull headache that's affecting that side of the eye. People often describe it as a sort of dull headache that just won't go away and that's localized to the eye. Hmm. The eye is usually red, but not always. And particularly in children, it may not be red. Um, and when you examine the patient, you will find signs, I've got some of them on the pictures here, of the pupil being stuck down, or you may have little dots on the eye. These are called keratic precipitates, which are effectively um, cells that have latched themselves onto the inner surface, the endothelium of the cornea. But by and large, what you get is um, a red eye that has this kind of violaceous deep hue. As you see when looking through the, um, the slit lamp, are there any other signs associated with it or anything else that we need to be looking out for when we're examining the eye? Sure. The main thing that you would see are cells and flare within the anterior chamber. That is something that you would need a slit lamp to, to, to hmm. detect. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So what causes it? I mean, I understand that there's um, causes within the eye and causes uh, systemically. What are they, um, what are they sort of, uh, what are the most common reasons why people, people get this? Well, if you're a uveitis specialist, you'd see this as very much of a black art. But from your perspective, one of the main causes, particularly of anterior, they're different causes depending on whether it's anterior or posterior. Mm. In the anterior segment, one of the main things that you need to know about is HLA-B27, which, as you know, is associated with psoriasis, inflammatory bowel disease, yeah. um, rheumatoid arthritis. And that's one of the main, um, um, I beg your pardon, ankylosing spondylitis as well. But that's one of the main reasons that people get anterior uveitis. There may be other causes, and again, you just go through your surgical sieve to know whether it's infective, inflammatory. Um, many of the, um, uh, condition, the, the, the systemic diseases that cause arthritis also are associated with uveitis. So things like SLE, sarcoid, hmm. infective causes, tuberculosis, for example, um, syphilis is becoming more common. Toxoplasmosis, that would cause mainly a posterior uveitis. So really it depends on the context of how the patient presents and what they've been exposed to and what their inheritance and disease uh, predispositions are. Okay, okay. So someone comes to you with this and you've successfully diagnosed what it is. How is it treated? There's a, the, in the main, again, a lot depends. I mean, posterior and anterior are very different. Um, anterior uveitis is by far the most common that you're likely to encounter if you're an ophthalmologist and you're not a uveitis specialist. Hmm. Um, and that is usually treated with topical treatment, which is topical steroids. You would need, need to use dilating drops for the pupil. Um, as you can see, if this gets stuck down like that, it's not a very healthy situation for the eye and it can predispose you to glaucoma mm. and therefore you want to make sure that the person doesn't get into that situation so you use a dilating drop something like tropicamide which is short acting and doesn't um, necessarily um, prejudice the patient's ability to focus like something like cyclopentolate would but we use it depends on the circumstance so in the main you would need to use topical steroids and a topical dilating agent okay okay and in patients that, I mean, you've mentioned a whole host of things that uh, predispose you to, um, to this. Is there any way of um, preventing it in these people? Is there any preventative treatments or do you only treat it when it actually 
occurs. Yeah, usually it's a situation of recurrences and the recurrences are treated as they present. Hmm. The, the classification is, is, is quite stratified. You can get, um, it's unusual to get an acute episode, which is a one-off, except if it's infective. Hmm. Uh, but there can be long delays between having recurrences, um, or you can have patients who have persistent inflammation, um, and that's known as chronic anterior uveitis. So you would normally just treat the recurrences as they occur. Okay. But if a patient has chronic anterior uveitis, then they would be on um, treatments persistently, usually a tropical steroids or non steroidal agents such as Acula. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So final question. As a medical student coming up to finals or as an F2 in A&E or GP trainee, what do we need to know about this to um, you know, successfully treat it and stop ourselves getting sued? <laughs> Don't dabble. Don't dabble with posterior uveitis. That needs to be in the hands of a specialist. Mm -hmm. Intermediate uveitis is also a difficult one because you can get into difficulties with cystoid macular edema, which can be site threatening posterior uveitis, anything that you see, if you see vitritis, send it to an expert. If you see anything on the retina, send it to an expert. Anterior uveitis can also get you into trouble because the complications are cataract, glaucoma, and both of these can be, uh, the cataract is somewhat easier to treat, hmm. but uh, glaucoma can be intractable and lead to blindness. And therefore, um, again, unless you have ophthalmic training, make sure that somebody sees it. In the casualty setting, it might be all right to start treatment, but again, even the treatments themselves can cause complications. And therefore, it's important that somebody who knows what they're doing with these drops um, administers them and monitors the patient. Okay, okay, so the main message is contact the ophthalmologist. I would have thought so, Yeah, yes. okay, fine. Great, okay, well, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you.